Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Still not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Maybe one day. Good morning. Today is the 13th of April and uh, I would have been at Pride of Lombridge viewers but um, that event has been cancelled because Cofton Park is underwater. So um, well, here we are at Great British Car Journey for Longships and Octagons Day 1. Um, they kindly fitted in a good deal of MGs and Rovers at very short notice. We'll start with this one, it's a car that actually is owned by a couple of friends of mine, Signor Latore and Mr Dan Hooper. This one is a 2005, so it's quite a late one. It's not the latest car we'll see here, I don't think. We shall continue. Oh look, here's Nigel. Good morning, Nigel. Not very responsive. Never mind. So, apologise in advance if I get things wrong, if I fall over, and uh, if it's generally a terrible video. And also, thank you Mayor of London and all your friends around the country. We don't talk about dealers on this channel. Turn it off now if you don't like that. Okay, let's check this rev count of yours and see what we're looking at. Oh, is it Petrol Street? Good. Good start. Um, interesting. I wonder if that's um, actually an MG Rover press or fleet car with a Birmingham plates on it. It's 2003 to 4, early streetwise. They came in in 2003. Um, imagine that'd be the 1.4K series. You could also get uh, 1.8k series in these, but um, it's probably the 1.4, most of them were. Facelifted um, GZR, I don't know actually whether that's just a normal kind of 105 or something, or it's the 160, who knows. Um, but yeah, 2004 facelift. So um, Mr Philip Hall has driven this car all the way from, all the way from Germany, and he's uh, got Nigel's friend Raphael in there. Although it's on German plates, this car is right-hand drive. That's not a mistake. Your eyes do not deceive you. And uh, yes, it's a monogram colour, of course, in Twilight. This car you'll be familiar to many of you. It's owned by Constable Bailey. Um, I drove this all the way back in 2020 for no-budget reviews. It's a 2003 TF135, and they are very, very good fun cars to drive. This one is in exceptionally good condition. What have we got here? Oh, this car's actually on my list to drive very, very soon. It's a 1998 Rover 114. It's owned by a um, particular gentleman who is um, a kind of um, driving instructor. So we're on, we're on, we're on, but this is actually on the list. It's a very late one. Production finished um, December 97, although it is actually 98. And of course, it's a, it's a GSI because that's the sort of thing that we like very much. So we'll be, it'll be coming up very soon. And um, so it looks appropriate because you've got this thing on the top here as well. Although I don't think this is really used as a learner car anymore. But you've also got this old flip savvy phone, and also this um, old driving instructor from the old tax disc. I mean, that is um, Nightfire Red. Does it even get any better than that, viewers? That is wonderful. Right, so uh, MG ZR facelift. Imagine again that's like a 105 or something judging by the interior, but I'm not not entirely sure. I like the wheels on that one. Now this is more my sort of thing. This is very nice. Pre-facelift um, Rover 800, I think this is an 827 this one. Fast back. 90 to 1991 registration. I've seen this before somewhere I think. Yeah, 87 SI with some amazing original dealer plates on it. Eden Bridge over in Kent, KK, Kent registration. This belongs to Sergeant Langstaff. This one is um, it's a 2003, I think, uh, ZT 160 with the 1.8 Turbo K series in it. This car's just had about £1,600 worth of work done to it, so it's had everything kind of done, which is, um, which is amazing. Right, viewers, we're just going to have to do a little check it now, just make sure we don't talk about things we shouldn't be talking about on the channel. There we go, successfully dodged. Right. Very early um, TFS one on a 52 plate. The earliest ones are on a 51 plate. Uh, they were released, I think, February 2002. But uh, Trophy Blue, 
Ooh, an X Power SVR. I mean, I imagine it's an SVR because of the plate. Um, actually, two of them. The right hand one, obviously, we know the person who owns that one. I'm not sure about this one. Um, MG Sports and Racing registration. Quite a few of them were registered to MG Sports and Racing back in the day. Based on a platform of the Kefali Mangusta, I think it was called, um, or Data Marzo Mangusta. The SVR was the more powerful version. Um, you could actually get this in manual or automatic. Automatics are particularly rare. And yes, those are Fiat Punto Mark II headlamps. A mixture of kind of forward bits and some sort of Italian bits. This one belongs to John. Hello, John. Hello, Joseph. Good morning. How are we? All right, thank you. We've got an MG cup of tea as well. Yes, yeah, so all, all the branding. Very, a very, very <laughs> nice car indeed. I, I like this interior colour. John's got a very, very nice collection of MGs. Obviously, you know, being one of the people who's doing a principal summer garage, it's um, not particularly surprising. Can't remember the year of this one. No. And there's another one here as well. When, when do you see three MGX Power SVRs all, all together? You just don't see them. This one's got a blue interior. Um, yeah, exceptionally nice. I did a, a sort of video on um, an X uh, Power SVR automatic that John had himself at the time in 2021, a red one, um, which is one of the rarest versions of them. I like this one though, I like the colour very much. So, uh, yes, we'll go on now to something an awful lot older. We'll go on to so a, couple, a couple of Rover P4s for the here. You can actually drive a P4 right here. We'll look at some of the cars um, that you can drive at Great British Car Journey in later part. But um, we'll go with this, uh, this P4. The Rover 100s were sort of relatively late in the production life of these. Um, they um, have a, a nice 2.6 six cylinder engine. I have driven a Rover 100 around this time, about 1960, 61, something like that. Um, this is a 105S, which is a little bit earlier. There's not there's not too many sort of styling cues that differentiate them. I mean, particularly in these uh, two two tone cars, that I think would have been the same colour originally. It's just, this one's a little bit different. But they have got. Um, just so many amazing characteristics. The engine's quite torquey. The brakes are quite good, actually. The servo-assisted disc at front. But the gearbox, yeah. Um, let's not talk too much about the gearbox. It's not the, not the easiest one to use, in my opinion. Right, uh, TF2005. Um, oh, gosh, I forget the name of this colour. It's not atmosphere. That's a bit lighter than this. But yes, we might see later ones than this. And then a very late Rover R3200 from G Kingsbury in Hampton. I once owned a car with dealer plates from G Kingsbury in Hampton. This has got the um, a Cosmos alloy wheels off, uh, I think, of Rover 45. Uh, they're the same ones as on my 45 V6. They're also very similar to 200 BRM wheels. Uh, yeah, late one. The 25 came out in late 99 on the V, so this is also that sort of era. Um, quite a high spec one, actually, with the leather interior. Or part leather. Yeah, I don't know what engine that is. It, it might be like a sort of, I don't know, 1.8 or something. Bit of a change of pace. Um, 1976 to 77 uh, MGB GT. Actually, that looks like a really, really clean example. It's got the, I think, correct wheels it would have come with. It might even have the correct steering wheel. Most of them don't anymore. Yeah, that's the original steering wheel it would have come with, which is, uh, which is crazy. Most of them haven't taken off um, because it's very sort of 70s. I quite like these later rubber bumper MGBs. I know a lot of people don't, um, but I'm quite fond of them. And uh, I mean, you, you can take the bumpers off if you if you want. Um, that's perfectly fine. Um, but one thing I don't particularly like is the chrome bumper conversions. Yes, I did say that, viewers. Um, you know, I'm entitled to my opinion, as are you, of course, about such things. Um, number 200 R3. I'm wondering if this is, yeah, this is, um, this is 99 a T. By this time, they'd taken off the individual badging for these, and so it just said 200 rather than like 216 or whatever on it, which is a bit annoying with trying to identify things. Let's go on to this um, Rover P6, and uh, we'll have to think about that 75 in a moment. Right, 2200 TC, so uh, they call them Series 2 car, facelift. The TCs have um, a different dash from the SCs, I think. 
I've driven a 2000 SC automatic, it's a 67, and it wasn't actually that bad, it was it was pretty good. Uh, this one's a lot later than that though, this is a sort of um, 73, 74 on an, on an M, and it's it's immaculate this, isn't it? I'm not sure if that's a lever or vinyl interior, but if that is the lever interior, it is a beige lever interior with wood, of which we approve very much. So 2004 to 5, MG ZS. I don't know if this is a 180 or not. 180s normally will say somewhere on the car that they are. It could be. Because they did make them in saloon and they made them in um, uh, in hatch variant. Got both. Early 45 here with the Cosmos wheels that the same as on my old 45 V6. A doubly plate, so 2000. This would be a pre-project drive one. And yes, it is uh, something from the Project Nigel, Nigel stable. That is... Um, that's actually really nice. Quite a high spec one with the chrome, um, the chrome mirror caps and the headlamp washers. Although I, I don't th think it's a connoisseur because that would have had a leather interior and this doesn't. So I'm not entirely sure what um, specification that is then. Maybe it's a club or something. Oh, here we go. Um, 2002 MGZ TT 190. Excellent. Very good. I love this colour. I have driven one of these a long, long time ago. It was like, but no budget was episode two or something in 2019. But they are very nice. Yeah, use of pink antifreeze only. That's the one to do. MGF, quite a late. Oh, someone's going to be an information sheet. Fantastic. Uh, 2001, so quite late for an MGF actually. Right. We're Careful about stuff around here a little bit. We just check these information sheets carefully. This, oh, excellent! Right, another 190 plus. It's also a 2002. That one, actually, the, the plate pretty much matches up with the, the year, but it's a personal one, which is which is good. Yeah, is it 180? This one, more common as a saloon with a hatchback, I think. But yes, it looks like it's almost a sort of launch spec, that one. And we've got another MGF. This is an example of one of the earlier ones. Perhaps about that later one over there. Interesting sort of interior. Let's have a look at this and see what year exactly this is. Uh, it's 96. Okay, that's a very early one. Though. Came out um, on an N in late 95 from memory, like, sort of like August, September 95. 1995, Rover 20 Vitesse Sport. This uh, is a car that I have driven on the channel. It belongs to Dan, who's one of the organisers of today. Um, normally, Nigel the Bear is sitting inside here somewhere. He's not in here today. That's a very, very nice car, actually. It was a, it was a fantastic drive when I had a go in it. The only thing is, about the 800, I always find the steering just a bit too light. Um, but, you know, it depends what your preference is, really. Oh, this is very nice. This is 2175. This is like a sort of Connoisseur SE or something. Um, that's in a very, very nice condition. It's got like a sort of plum-coloured interior. Fortunately, the raindrops make it difficult to see inside, but um, there's nothing we can do about that sort of thing, is there? So never mind. Very late 600 here. Um, I'm not entirely sure what specification it is. I think it's a 620 GSI with cruise control, because... The 623s would have got cruise control as standard, but um, you could order it as an option on the 620s. And the 623s, uh, GSIs, were almost all automatic. There were very, very few of the uh, manual 623 GSIs made. So it's probably a 620 GSI with the um, cruise control option, which is a good spec. Um, that one with the <laughs> sort of with dustbin and the wheel trims. Um, particularly sort of expanded on GSIs, headlamp protectors. There's a 1992,000 plate. Then, unfortunately, we've got um, some evidence of uh, what goes on with these cars and something you've got to watch. Yep, that's the biggest problem on MG Rover era cars. Sometimes with the engines as well, but uh, we won't talk about that for now because that's um, a long subject for another video. Very late one, again, a monogram. I can forget the name of this colour. Uh, 2005... 
Ooh, MG RV8. Now, now we're talking. This is this is properly nice. This one, 94.95 on an M, and a beige leather interior with a wooden steering wheel, a wooden dash. It's actually like an upgraded M MGB V8, really. Um, the body shells are very similar, but uh, yeah, with some with a lot of changes. 3.9 liter V8. Um, that was used also at the time in the Range Rover. Right, um, what have we got here? Ooh. Oh, excellent. Okay, so this is an early M MG ZT 160, um, which actually has the 2.5 v V6 in it. The later ones had a 1.8 turbo K series. This uh, particular owner's only had it for about four months, actually. So there we go. That is... Um, that is good. It's good to see such things actually in, in all conditions. Like this um, 800 Vitesse here. It's an earlier one than Dan's one. And this isn't sort of a show queen or anything. Good to see somebody using it. Yeah, we've still got wood and everything, so all is right with the world. And we have got Recaro seats. So we have to walk down this side because I can't get actually in, but we'll have a. Look at this ZS, sorry, ZS 180 as well. In Sunspot, I think this name is this yellow colour, um, which is a monogram one. Preface, if so, 2001 to 4. There's the front end of um, the uh, Vitesse, sort of 93, 94 on an L. Right, at 45. This is a bit of a low spec, the other one we've seen. Um, I can't remember exactly what trim this would be. Hopefully this is a petrol one, Viers. Can't read that from here. I have driven one of these like this on the channel. It was an Impression S, I think it was, which was the very popular special edition. Yep, K series, that's fine. The um, ones from like sort of just after the car was made. In 2002 onwards, they are slightly different from this. This is an earlier one. Ah, very nice. An SD1. Quite late 85, 86. I wonder what specification this one is. Crazy dashes in them. A lot of the owners of these have, have changed the original steering wheels because they are quite big um, for sort of, you know, certain manoeuvres. I don't know, to be honest. It's, it should have a rear wiper in it, but a lot of people have got rid of those. There is actually one you can drive here um, at Greenbridge Car Journey, and I have driven it. So I drove it on Monday, so the video will be coming up at some point on the channel. Right, that one we can't talk about. Um, right, we're going to have a little look at some rev counters now, viewers, and just check we're in a safe area. I'm actually going to start from this end. Um, on the Birmingham plates, 2003 to 4, rev 75. 2.5 v6 i think this is probably a connoisseur or something like that automatic with beige leather interior and wood mm. i've seen this before I, I forget the name of the gentleman who actually owns this but i have i have seen that before next we'll go on to this one um 2004 to 5 mg zt 260 which is a v8 engine very nice viewers Face lifted one, you could get a pre face lift as well, but most of the ZT260s I've seen, and I have driven one of these as well, um, they are the face lifted variety. And then we've got another ZT260 V8, which looks particularly kind of menacing in this black colour, which um, I think is, um, which I think is, uh, I just boots it really. They're quite aggressive cars anyway. Pre facelift ZT, uh, this will be the 1.8 turbo, so it's a 160. And uh, Biomorphic is the name of that colour, which is uh, which is good. 2003 to 4. So I saw um, Mr. Bushby earlier on bringing this in. This is his um, it's a 92 93 uh, 216 GSI. Now, some GSIs had an optional leather interior, this doesn't. This has the optional alloy wheels, which look fantastic it's actually a slightly uh, later r8 this one because um, it's got the 
what they call the round the corner indicators on the front. So it, it means October 92 or later. Um, the earlier ones just had sort of flat front indicators. But that's very nice. I've seen that quite a few times now, actually. And then um, another 25. Actually, there have been too many 25 we've seen so far today. Someone's bought a pen for it as well. I mean, that's, um, that's the sort of thing we like, isn't it? Some of the 51 registrations, so 2001 to 2. Um, yeah, I think it's a case series. It's difficult to read some of these rev counters because they're quite dark. My gosh, it's not just, not just one pan. There's loads of accessories in there. Look at all those things. And we've got um, early 600 of this one, a comparison with the last one. Uh, 93, 94 on an L with the Project Nigel kind of YouTube sticker in the window. Just 620 SI, but, but the lowest one was the I. The SI was sort of one above. You were sort of getting folding rear seats and things like that. Um, and um, yeah, it's got this sort of early dash in it. It's so early, this one, in fact, that it's, it's actually got no airbag in it. Um, so very early car. Wouldn't have come with these wheels originally, but they look really good. They are upgrade wheels and they suit the car quite well. Um, yeah, MGZ TT 2005 is a 180, so this has been automatic with a 2.5 V6. Rio Red. Interesting. 2003 Rover 75 2.5 V6. Connoisseur SE, Ooh. <laughs> and predictably a beige leather interior with wood and piping. Extraordinary. Right, okay, we're going to have to be careful down this road, viewers. Just uh, give me a second and we'll just uh, do some checking. Right, preface lifts at 190 is pretty safe with, with this one. Excellent. Trophy blue. Which is, um, yeah, a very popular colour with MG Rover era cars. This one, a facelift T, though plates from 2001. Uh, it's actually a 2004 to 5. Imagine it's probably like a V6 one, but I don't know exactly. It's not the V8, because that would um, actually have a V8 badge inside it. Another Rover 100. This one's a bit of an earlier one. It's also a lower specification, perhaps, than. Stuart's one. It's got the interesting interior, but we've got no alloys on it. Let's just see what this one actually is. I just don't not my head on something. Yeah, it's an SLI, 114 SLI. What's really weird is that saw on Stuart's car that it's got no airbag. This earlier car with a low specification has an airbag. The attribution of airbags um, in Rover Hundreds was really odd. Um, they sort of gave, gave and they took away in various years. It's strange. Earlier thing here, this is um, probably not an MG Metro, it's got MG Metro details in it though. Um, 8687 on a D. MG wheels and um, we've got red seat belts in here. And a steering wheel, but given it's an Austin badge on here, I, I don't know, I'm a little bit confused about that, viewers. Um, but it still says Metro 1.3L on the back, so I'm assuming that's what it is. Ooh, X Power sticker. 16 valve twin cam. So this had a 1.8 turbo swap in it or something. If it didn't officially come with it, but there were plans to introduce it before MG Rover went under in April 2005. Um, so face this one 2004 to 5. Um, hello to MGZS.Chris on Instagram. I've got this, I think this is. Um, get this right. Atmosphere, this, this name of this colour is, I could be wrong. Uh, 2003 to 4ZR. Yep, you got to watch that rust. What a shame. It's killed so many of these, it's just real shame. So that's why there's the uh, Save Our Z campaign with these. Right, let's, uh, let's be careful down this road because um, there's a certain car belonging to a gentleman which we can't talk about, which we're going to have to skip. <laughs> right, can't talk about that one. Much as Mr. Brooke from Beards and Bags wants me to, we'll walk straight past. It was one of the mayor of London might hear it. Right, these two are all right though. 
Um, more streetwise action going on. 2024, of course, the year of the streetwise, but on this channel with petrol ones only. Um, this is an interesting one. This is a three door one. Uh, 2003 to 2003 to four. Can't remember the trim levels on these. The later ones are likes of GSI and GLI and things like that. Can't remember what the earlier ones were, but yeah, they made they made both the the, the, uh, the three and the, the five door streetwises because you can see them there here. Um, and this one is from Simon the Smashing Pistons channel. So you can see, yeah, we're all safe with this. This looks like a, maybe it's like a GSI or something, the later one, but it's got nice wheels on this as well. The really basic street wise only came with steel wheels with some sort of funny kind of plastic covers on them. Late pre facelift of 25 here. Fortunately, this is a little bit of an oil leak. Interesting kind of um, bonnet swap on this one. Makes it look uh, kind of very much like some of the cars I used to see when I was when I was younger, although they must have been not much older when I was growing up. But this sort of bonnet swapped over. ZR 160 with the VVC engine. Excellent view. Is that's what we like to see? This is probably a plus model as well with the leather interior. Oh, we've got armrests as well, and a new stereo. All very sensible modifications. 2004 MGZR. Let me just get through here without damaging too many things. Just slip through there. See difference here between the sort of standard um, K-Series and the VVC version there, can't you? See the standard difference between them. This one looks like it's had some work done. This is a very late one, it's 2005. Interesting interior was sort of colour coded to the exterior of the car. Hello to Becky Adams98 on Instagram. More K series actually. Rampage Rally, I wonder what that is. Hello to that um, underscore VVC underscore ZS on um, Instagram. They never actually made uh, one of these with a VVC engine. This would have been swapped into it. Obviously, like, there's plenty of those around in various cars that may have been killed, unfortunately, by rust and things like that. So let's see what it looks like under the bonnet of the uh, ZS. There we go. With the interesting rocket cover on there and green. We'll have to think about that in a second. Right. Um, oh, another Rover 100. Three of them that are here. 97.98, so right in the production. This one, I wonder if it's like a special edition or something like that. Oh dear me. Oh dear, I've been caught out, viewers. I think we'd better leave. 1992-1993 Mini has been modified. Um, pre facelift MGZS 180. Post facelift. MG ZR, and we've got a 2003 25. I wonder what specification this is if it's got the leather interior. We've got lots of friends in here, it's nice, right? This um, TF has got the heritage certificate. What specification is this? It's the uh, trophy blue. What engine is it? it doesn't actually say, it's interesting. Oh no, it does. It's a it's a 160. Excellent TF 160. Fantastic. And then we've got a very sort of modified looking ZR here. Hello to Georgia underscore ZR underscore on Instagram. Classic kind of thing to do was to fit these rear lights, the standard R3 200s and 25s as well, back in the day. So. Raw ZS action. I wonder if this is a 180. With that big spoiler, it probably is to be honest. Yeah, ZS 180 2002. Uh, V6, excellent, that's good. 75 Toro 2002 to 3. Automatic, maybe like a Connoisseur SE or something, all that wood and things. Interesting thing that's in, in here. My, wow. That looks like a T-Series Turbo in this cabriolet. Now, by the time this would have been made, like 9899 on an S, the T-Series Turbo wasn't available anymore. It had been swapped over for the 1.8 um, VVC K-Series. So that's interesting. 
I think actually that is it for this first part. We'll cover this other row in the second part. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and we shall see you again very soon for some more incorrect information. <laughs>